Yo, how is everybody doing? And welcome back to another episode of the Sixer Standard Podcast. I am Ethan Koppelman, along with my friend Noah Mofsowitz here. Hey, Hi. what's up? I'm good. How about you, man? Yeah, you know what, Noah? Uh, been been pretty well, a little bit more work school wise, but what I would say is Sixers wise, haven't uh, been a whole lot of news uh, for the Sixers, so nothing to make me ba- mad. I guess that's a positive. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think because of that, today is going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. Uh, I know our last two episodes are long. Uh, because the first one was the first episode, we wanted to make that a long one. The second one had a shit ton of news to talk about. This time we, just we have don't have a lot of news. This time we don't have, have news. much news. But uh, one thing that has been circling around the league, and I think it has been reported by Shams or Shams or how, however you say it, earlier in the week, and it really came to fruition throughout the week, is that James Harden, the, the Sixers won him, and uh maybe a big reason that they hired Maury was to get Harden here. And yeah, it, that's a lot to digest, I guess. So now I'm going to start yeah. with you. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's, I think it's really amazing. He was proud. I think he was um, three times in a row. He, he led the league in scoring. And he, he's actually an underrated passer. He can pass. And I think underrated. him and then being, can work very well as long maybe with like him and Simmons that way Harden doesn't need the ball always and like he can rely on like Simmons to find him open and then Harden can be more of like a catch and shoot type piece and with him being it's like it's game over because you have a dominant big man probably the most dominant big man in the NBA besides Giannis and uh you have a shooter and an ISO player like James Harden so I think we try to go after this guy. If it's training away and being or Simmons, I do it. What are your thoughts? I agree with you, and uh, except the two points that you said. One, you said you could just kind of use Harden as a catch and shoot guy. Well, you could with uh, Simmons because he can play make, and then Harden can like yeah, shoot. And he can Harden. also if no, but he can also ice Harden to no, your he team. Can also ice Harden him. is I'm going out. to have the ball in his hands. At the guts of the game, as Mark Zumoff said. He will. I mean, throughout the game, not like the last two, the two minutes, the last two minutes, of course, he's going to have the ball. I, I, I mean, like, Simmons game, will be the point guard. He's a player that needs the ball in his hands, James Harden. And I, and I don't know how you can disagree with that. I like disagree. There hasn't been saying. a team where James Harden hasn't had the ball in his hands for the majority of the time. Even on the Rockets this year with Russell Westbrook, Harden has the ball in his hands a lot. At the very least, they're not using him as a catch and shoot player. Okay, he is no, not buddy healed. You're not trading he can for be. I mean, no, that's I mean transition you can use him as like when Simmons like has the ball in transition, Harden can like go to the three point line, just catch and shoot. But when it's when the other team scores, you obviously Harden will have the ball in his hands. So that's what I'm trying to say. I think Harden's I think Harden is a point guard. Simmons is a point guard. Harden is the point guard. If you trade for if you trade for Harden, Harden is the point guard, okay? I mean well, that, with him be, that, yes. That, 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 I don't know how else. And be, with him and then Bede, yes, of course he's going to be the point guard. But with him and Simmons, no. I don't, I don't think he'll be the point guard with Why not? Simmons. Because Simmons is an elite passer. Yeah, he's a passer, so he can pass the ball away. And or he's a good ball, ball in his hands, And he will keep the ball in his hands. He needs to play point guard because he's a guy that needs the ball in his hands. Simmons doesn't need the of ball course. in his hands, so he, while he's a good point guard, he could also fit at the small forward, power forward position. Yes, Harden is classified as a shooting guard, but he's really a point guard. Okay. No, you can you can disagree with me if you want. I it's it's okay. I mean, yeah. Well, that's your thoughts. With Simmons, like with a player like Ben Simmons, I think when the other like say like we're playing against like the Kings. And the Kings score a basket. I want James Barn with the ball in his hands on that. But in transition, I want Ben Simmons with the ball because he can find people and he can also distribute very well. And I think Harn can run in transition. And that's why I want Simmons with, with the ball in transition. You're in a transition in a fast break and Simmons gets the CO. He's just taking it all the way to the rim. No, I mean, like, if the other team misses, like, he gets a rebound, I want Simmons with the ball. He 
and Harden just like runs with him in transition or goes to like the three point line and he shoots. Yeah, I would agree with you that Simmons in transition is good, is unique because he could grab rebounds as well as uh, take the ball up the court. Harden's not a guy that's going to push a fast break in transition. I think Simmons is more capable of doing that. But uh, if you're trying to ru- run like a transition play, like a fast break, then you give the ball to Simmons. But if you're just trying to run like a slow offense, which we saw a lot from the Sixers last year, I don't yeah, think that's we saw many transition say. fast breaks. It was all That's slow what I was offense. trying to say. Yeah, it was a so, slow offense. Obviously, Harden has at the ball. And a lot of times it's going to be the slow offense, but it was historically higher for the Sixers. So yeah. if, when you're running a slow offense, you're, the ball is always in Harden's hands. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying in transition. Yeah, okay. In transition, that makes sense. Uh, if Simmons is on the team. Well, uh, the other thing I would, anyway, the other thing I would disagree with you about is that, uh, well, not disagree with you about, but you didn't mention the fact that it's not going to be easy to get him. I, I, I don't think. Uh, I think we're, yeah. Um, I it's understand. It's a 50-50, honestly. 50-50? Because the Rockets might not even be interested in training him. And, may, and if they are, of course, they're going to train to us. Of course, we're going to probably offer him the best package for Harden. I mean, uh, what I would say is I, I, th- there's a much less than a 50-50 chance he comes here. There's probably like a, 1%, a 2% chance he comes here. Two? You know, Harden? No. Harden might – you might not even know. Harden might even demand a trade because he's not even weighing any chips in uh, Houston. Oh, he likes it in Houston. Well, he wants to win, and I think yeah. every NBA player wants even to if, win. Even if he was going to get traded, the chance he goes here, I'm not even sure. I'm not sure if they want Simmons. I'm not sure if they want Embiid. So I'm not sure if he comes here. I don't think Harden's on the trading block. I don't think – they. You know, they've made it clear that it, it's a non-starter. Houston does not want to trade him. So right now, there's a 0% chance it happens. Again, uh, their opinion could change in Houston and percentages could go up. But right now, to be honest, I think the chance is at zero just because, uh, I mean, they don't even want to do it. Hmm. But, I mean, it, it, Houston's not really interested right now. Uh I see the reasoning behind it for the Sixers. The Je- uh, Harden love Mike D'Antoni, gone. Harden uh, yeah. love James Harden. Not well, of course Harden love James Har- Har- Harden. <laughs> love- <laughs> Harden love Daryl Morey. Uh, he's gone. Uh, you know Daryl Morey built everything around him. So while we don't have Mike D'Antoni here, he has Doc Rivers, a players coach. He also has uh, Daryl Morey here. So. You know, if he could try to lure him to Philly, definitely a possibility. You're right. Harden hasn't won very much. So, I guess I, I see your opinion there. I'm just not sure how likely it is. How, 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 likely, how likely do you think it is that Harden comes here? I think it's either they're not trading him or they're, uh, they're interested in talking. And if I think they're interested in, in talking a deal for James Harden, I think he comes here. I think when you say talking, like even if they're like, in, if if they're if they're if they're allowing offers to come in, like not not even offers, if they're allowing you to talk about James Harden, right? That doesn't yeah. mean they're going to trade him. That just means they're they're inquiring, you know, seeing how how the waters look. Yeah, I think like I just I just think we have the best package to offer for James Harden, unless if like the Lakers are offering like LeBron James, like of course. But, like, they're not doing that. I think some young teams could have some offers. If the What if the Grizzlies won James Harden? They have all the young talent in the world. Well, they have John Moran and, like, some other shoot. And, like, Jerry Jackson. Bill Brooks, who is a lethal shooter, averaged 16 points last year. He's basically buddy healed but way cheaper. Uh, so you put him in. He, he's really good. John Moran is thought very highly of. Jared Jackson Jr. is also thought as high of. Uh, I mean, he's a stretch power forward. He shoots the three ball very well. You have Jonas Valanciunas there. Again, very good player. They, they have a good team there, I think. And, and again, very cheap players. So I think there's – Sixers could put together a good offer. Uh, I wouldn't say the best, but 
I think if the Sixers really tried and the Rockets had interest in listening, they could get the deal done if they wanted to. Yeah. And to all the listeners out there, uh, whether this is good news or bad news, the NBA has to start has decided to restart December twenty second. Is it a fit? It is official. The players have agreed. Any thoughts on that? I honestly think it's way too early for the Lakers and uh, the Heat because they need time to rest, especially like LeBron James and uh, Jimmy Butler. Like they were playing like almost. Well, Jimmy Butler, I know, was playing like at least like forty six minutes a game, and LeBron was probably playing like forty four, like forty two. So I think those, and like I think these those two teams need you know, much more. I think they need a month. Uh, break. From, they should start in like January, not December. I think December is uh, way too early for those two teams. But for the rest of the for the rest of the league, it is fine, and I think it's a good starting date for the rest of the league. Besides uh, the Miami Heat and the Los Angeles uh, Lakers. Yeah, and here's a hot take for you. I think that starting in December, I think I think it's a huge disadvantage again for the Heat and Lakers. It's too early for them. I think the players agreed because of monetary reasons because, you know, they're like, well, your salaries are going to be shortened by this. We can't afford to pay you this if we're having a shorter season. Hot take here. I think the Miami Heat could get a losing record next year. They could. And I think under 500, I think Jimmy Butler, I think they're going to have finals fever or whatever they call it. I think Jimmy, I think the guy's work ethic is going to go way down. I think they're going to think they're set. They're really not up. Bam needs to take a really big step forward. I'm not sure he will. Jimmy Butler needs to be what he was in the playoffs. I don't think he's going to get back to that, let's be honest. Tyler Hero, yeah. I think, I'm worried about his work, work ethic. He's yeah, I don't think he works. Posing, po- posing, with it, posing with Instagram models. Especially uh, as Kyle Kuzma's girlfriend. Yeah, he, 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 he's like Kyle Kuzma, but uh, I don't know if he has a work ethic. He might be complacent with what he did last year and not strive to get better. And because of that, I think he might get worse. Uh, I think the my, I don't think there's a ton of talent there to be honest in the first place. I, I guess you could say I'm a Miami heat hater. I think they're going to have a losing record. I think the Lakers could have a rough going too. I think it could be similar to, I guess with Russ and Harden, you know, but possibly worse. I think the Lakers will still be on the winning record even though they haven't taken, like, a long break. I think it could be like. I think it could be like the Golden State Warriors last year, the Lakers. I think what could happen is LeBron James gets hurt, and then and then they have Anthony Davis, who can't carry them. Because let's be honest, can Anthony Davis carry a team by himself? No, he needs LeBron. Yeah, he was at the Pelicans, and he couldn't do it. By the way, LeBron can't carry a team by himself either. I mean... When did he do it? What? When did, when did he carry a team by himself? What are you talking about? When did he carry a team by himself? When? 2018 he did. 2018 he did. Is that with the Cavaliers? Yes. Didn't he have Kyrie and Kevin Love on that team? Uh, no, it was uh, when Kyrie Irving got traded and Kevin Love got injured. So, yes, he did carry a team by himself. But they didn't win the finals. No, because it was against uh, probably the best team of this modern era of the Warriors. But in the history, LeBron is not good is not good without other stars. You see whenever he wins a championship. Oh my God. Did, Are you kidding? Can I, tell, you? can I tell you why? Can I tell you why? In that first run with the Cleveland Cavaliers, he never won a championship. There is not a ton of talent there. He would have proved me wrong. He didn't win a championship there. He goes to Miami with Chris Bosch and Dwayne Wade, two of the league's premier stars he wins two championships. He goes to Cleveland with Kyrie Irving, one of the best young point guards at the time, and Kevin Love, who is killing the game in Minnesota as one of the elite power forward slash centers there. He wins a championship there. He goes to Los Angeles with one of the, an, a premier big man in Anthony Davis. They win a championship there. All right, hold on. He hasn't can... won a championship no, with no. talent in his career. Okay, I agree like with Kawhi that. Leonard has. No, 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 no. That is completely false. What are you talking That's about? That is completely false. How is that false? 
I was because like, oh. he actually did that talent. He had good role players like Fred Van Vliet. He, he had, had good, role players. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You're not listening. He had a good starter, Kyle Lowry. He had a good. He had the most improved player, Pascal Siakam. So yes, he actually did that talent on that team. He had talent, but without Kawhi Leonard, without superstar, without, oh without Kawhi Leonard on that team, what seed would that be with Kyle Lowry okay. being a team? No, no. No, no, but no, about, and here, and here. What about with the Lakers? What about for the Lakers and Cavs without uh, LeBron? What would that be? Lakers without LeBron this year? Uh, yes, and the Cavs without LeBron. What would that be? They would be a. Uh, uh, they would probably be like a uh, four or five seed with Anthony Davis. Um. Probably be like the six seed, but anyways. But what about the it, Cavs? They would make the. They would make. They would still be pretty good. The Cavs with Kyrie Irving on the team and Kevin Love. No, I mean LeBron James. No LeBron James on the team. They didn't want to. F- yeah, but still with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. Yeah, but they won't win. Kyrie Irving was a beast back then. He was like a sniper. Uh, first of all, he was actually not the best point guard. It was Curry who was the best point guard at that time. I didn't say he was. Did I say he was the best? You say he was a beast, and there was a better point guard. I didn't say he was the best. There was a better point guard. He would have never. He know. He would. If LeBron was not on that team, they never. They would have never won, because they had Curry and the and the Warriors. He would have smoked them if they didn't have LeBron. Yeah, but they still would have made the playoffs. Yeah, they maybe like at the same thing. You see, you can say the same thing both ways. LeBron wouldn't have won without them, and they wouldn't have won without LeBron. It's like Kawhi, on the other hand, it's like they wouldn't have won without Kawhi, but Kawhi made the, you know, but Kawhi would have won without without them because Pascal Siakam last year was not as good as Pascal Siakam this year. Pascal Siakam last year was, like, decent. Yeah, he was decent. I mean, that, that that's what I would say, but... uh. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think LeBron can't carry his own team. Uh, I don't not know how he got sidetracked that much, but uh, yeah, I think we're I talking about NBA topic. season restarting and about Anthony Davis and LeBron James and they, how they can't carry their own team. I I wouldn't be surprised if they had a Golden State Warriors esque season. I think one of them could easily have a season ending injury after they don't have enough time to rest. So I think they're going to be very injury prone when they come back. Let's say Anthony Davis gets injured. LeBron James is playing with a lot of really shit players like Rajon Rondo and Dwight, and Dwight <laughs> Howard and JaVale. And McKay. Alec Caruso. Okay, sorry. Caruso's the goat, other than Caruso. But you see, he's playing with a ton of shit players. He's not going to get anything done. I think that's a high possibility. And I don't think I think, think they're going to be as bad as the Warriors. They're not going to. There's yeah. no way unless both of them get hurt that they're a bottom seed. Yeah. But I think it's possible that they're like eight seed, barely miss the playoffs with one of them. I I would with one of them, yes. And but by I, the way, I know I might be contradicting myself. I said Anthony Davis could lead them to like a a four seed before, and now I said he can't. But the thing is, right? You got to take into account that they're just coming off like a month and a half layoff. So, right, Anthony Davis with normal rest is different than Anthony Davis with, like, a month and a half layoff. I think LeBron will be fine, honestly, but Anthony Davis wouldn't be that fine. Well, we'll, we'll have to see when that happens. But uh, yeah. another news story that has surfaced this week, Daryl Morey, and this is laughable. This is something that is so Sixers. <laughs> no, 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 no. If – you were to guess how much Daryl Morey is making, and I'll give you guys a few seconds to pause the video, pause the podcast. I know you guys will be seeing this on YouTube, but just guess how much money Daryl Morey is making with the Sixers if you haven't seen already. Okay, so your time's up. Daryl Morey is making $10 million a year. Not, not total, a year. Holy shit, man. <laughs> And we're I the dumbest, look up right we're now. We're the dumbest franchise. I'm going to look up NBA no, we're the executive salaries. They're probably like, I don't know, like... A million, two million? Five million? million? Yeah, somewhere right Oh, right. oh look at this. This is, this is going to be hilarious. The oh, God, average God. NBA executive... Oh, sorry. Oh, oh wait. wait. 
No, that 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 that's for uh, that's for an exact. That's not for an M- NBA general manager salaries. So let's see this. Oh God. A typical. Okay, this this is funny. Oh God. A typical NBA GM makes between one million and three million a year. For what the fuck? Excuse my language. I I, I oh, had to. Good. I had no, to. I good. had to. Ten million dollars. Really? I mean, this is such a Josh Harris thing to do. You pay Al Horford that money. You pay uh, Tobias, Tobias that money. Harris. You pay. I'm, I'm sure Doc Rivers is making a big bag of money. I'll tell you that. And. My Ellen, money. Not Ellen Brand. Sorry, Daryl Moore is probably making triple what Doc Rivers is making right now. Ten million a year. That is insane. That is so stupid. And this this is even funny. Okay. Fact, this is really funny. One of the general okay, so one of the general managers on the high end of that range. So notice this is like the general managers that are paid uh like like the most. Okay, like this is the top of the top. Yeah. Is the Toronto Raptors GM Masai Ujiri, who in 2013, this is sorry, this article was made back in 2017. I don't think there's going to be that much change from 2017 to 2020. Masai Ujiri, who signed uh, in 2013, signed a five year deal worth reportedly $15 million. Note that that is not over one year, but five years. So the oh highest, so the second highest paid GM in the league. Jesus is making Christ. three million, while the highest is making ten. Where, where the sh- and it's for five years. I know. So he's million. making fifty million. That's fifty million. So, I want to bring up the fact. If you add up, uh, Shake Milton, and Matisse Stiebel's sal- hold on. Let's actually look at Trade NBA because we're gonna go. So that for a second. Do that as well. And we're we're not looking at trades yet, but I, I just want to see. Uh, it has the Sixers whole roster on there for set and set. No, we will be looking at trades very soon. We will be looking at trades soon, so stay tuned for that. But uh, where are the Sixers on here? Here roster. Okay, so we go to the roster. We add up the salaries of Alec Burks. Furkan Korkmaz, and Matisse Thibel. Oh, God. That is about, like, uh, it's like, that is about $7 million. <laughs> That is all, all of them added up together. Matisse Thibel, Shake Milton. What the hell? And Alec we're Burks. The, we're the dumbest. We're absolutely the dumbest that franchise is- in sports history. Here's a, here's another here's another fun one, funny one. Okay. Guess who's making more? Ben Simmons this season or Daryl Morey next season? Oh, Daryl Morey is making more. <laughs> here's another one. Who's gonna make more next season? Josh Richardson or Daryl Morey? Daryl Morey. It's about you the same. Guess. It's about the same. This is bullshit, man. Josh Harris just. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, whoever's watching this. If you're under the age of uh, seven years Ew. old, do not watch this. But fuck you, Josh Harris. <laughs> exactly. I mean, such a scumbag. Like, you see all the stuff he does with, like, how he manages the team and, like, trying to, like, put money from other people's pockets into his, like, his money scheme. That's, like... You know, it's fucking it's bullshit. A fucking jerk. But yeah, definitely a smart move by Big Brain Josh. So shout out to him. I think I might have pointed to the wrong side. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, okay, yeah. but uh, we're gonna do some more uh, draft prep this video just a little bit, and I think I'm gonna share my screen if this lets me. Hold on, just let me go over, and I gotta get this guy's stats up. Actually, look at Ethan not being prepared for the podcast. So inspirational. 
But uh, I'm going to get this guy's stats up. And the guy I wanted to look at today is a guy that isn't really flashy at all. Not a guy I don't think we're going to have to trade up for. But you see him right here. It's Tyrell Terry. He's a 6'1 guard from Minneapolis. Is he white? No. I don't know, man. I, th- I, think, he's, I think he's like half. But... No, he's not white. No. You sure? I think he might be half and half. Or, or I don't know. I don't I'm know. not sure. But anyway. I'm not racist. I'm, 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 just, I'm just trying to find out because it, it, it's, it's a major dilemma I'm having with myself. But, uh, hey, Ethan. Jeez. I, I'm serious. Okay. But uh, he played one year at uh, Stanford. 31 games, 32 minutes a game. He shot 44% from the field, which is not great. That's okay. That's- not, All right. not great. Uh, Average. He made uh, where I think we should draft Tyrell Terry is because he shot forty percent from three. That yeah. is a good part. Shit, I bad. think is uh, really good. Also shot well from the line. I think he's going to be a perfect backup backup point guard. He plays defense too. One point four steals a game. Doesn't really. That's pass good the ball for a six one guard. What? That's good for like a six one player. Gets okay. one point four steals. That's really good. Again, only averaged fourteen point six points in the game. Or sorry, average, but uh I just feel like with him there's two things we need, and I think I've discussed this before. We need people that can dribble and we need people that can shoot. And Tyrell Terry's a guy that can do both, and I feel like he's gonna be a guy that when you're like, Oh shit, Ben Simmons has to get off you get off the court. Who am I going to put in? Shake Milton. Yeah, he can kind of shoot off the catch and shoot, but he can't. But, you know, he's not a point guard. He's, he can't he's dribble for guard. shit. And we're going to say he's a point guard, but, but you know, not really a point uh, that, But not really a point guard. I think you put in Tyrell Terry really confidently, and he's a guy that can really grow and turn into something more. Again, he was just a freshman last year. So, unlike Thibault, I think he's only like 18, 19. So, I just wanted to look at him, and I think that would be an interesting pick. And I'm going to stop yeah. sharing the screen. Yeah, I think that will be good pickup for us. Good backup point guard. Definitely. And now, uh, you know what? You want to do Eagles at the end and do Trade Finder, trade finder now just, just to keep it like we're Yeah. Gonna... Okay. okay. So yeah, what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to have our trade section. And you... Oh, I should have just kept sharing my screen, or do you want to go first? Well, you can go first. Let's change it up. Okay, so... I have three trades right here. Uh, which one I s- – we'll start with the least exciting. We'll go least exciting, most exciting. First one we have here is with the Chicago Bulls. Uh, I don't think they need Zach Levine. I think the Bulls are not going to contend anytime soon. And I think Levine's getting older and older every day. I don't, I don't think he's going to fit the timeline when they do contend. So the Sixers are going to go give him a package. They're going to give him Mike Scott. He's just there for salary. Uh because, yeah. We also give him Josh Richardson, who I think is going to be a good piece for them. He's still decently young, I would say. Uh, he can shoot. Good mentor as well. Very good leader, as you saw on the Sixers. Also acquiring two second-round picks. Bulls are rebuilding. They need picks. But, you know, the centerpiece of this deal is highlighted right here. Matisse Thibel. 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 I think the Bulls will love Thibault. Again, he's still very young. Defensive guard, he could start for them in Chicago. And, yeah, I think you get uh, a really good young piece there, and the Bulls would have to take a hard look at this. They might beg you for a first. Sixers might have to put it in. But I think Thibault, the Bulls would really want. And Zach Levine, again, in Philly, could be a combo guard. I think he can play the point guard, too. I think Ben Simmons would be your main ball handler, but – you put Levine at the two, and he could be kind of your secondary ball handler. And, uh, yeah. yeah, again, a really good shooter, underrated shooter. And I would say – Obviously a good dunker. The third best dunker in the NBA. Yes, behind Aaron Gordon. Actually, you know what? He's second. Who's me. the best dunker in the league? That's... I'm kidding. He's number one. No, who's the best dunker in the league? Zach Levine. No. Yes. In your opinion? Yeah. In my opinion, you know yeah. who my top dunker is? Who? Derek Jones Jr. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. It yeah, goes Derek Levine. Jones Jr. is my then, guy. It goes Zach Levine for me. 
then Aaron Gordon, then Derek Jones Jr. I would go uh, Derek Jones Jr. and then uh, Zach Levine and then Gordon. I think. Yeah. Wait, what? What are some other good dunkers in the league? I don't know. This is a decent like, dunker, I would say. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh well. I don't know. I th- <laughs> you know who's my favorite Young dunker? Raul Neto. <laughs> You know, I, I, have you seen his, uh, you know, his windmill dunks? Yeah, it's like, yikes. <laughs> Except he misses a hoop by, like, five feet. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the second trade, I have a lot of blockbusters here. The second one, this Holy is for shit. Devin Booker and DeAndre Aiden. And this is if the Suns want to blow it up. Again, extremely unlikely. This is just kind of like a what if. You give up Josh Richardson here. Again, I, I explain why his use, I guess. Ben Simmons, again, the centerpiece of this deal. A young guy that would fit what the Suns are trying to do. Uh, although, what they're trying to do becomes irrelevant because they're they're trading away their two best players. Also get Matisse Thibel. Again, a really, really good uh, value piece that would entice them to do this deal. Get a second-round pick and two first-round picks. So a good package for the Suns in that case. Uh, the last trade is a hardened trade in honor of Daryl Morey. Being the general manager again, I know we did some of these last time. Wanted to throw one in. I think Noah, you have one too. Uh yes, I have two trades. So in this case, we're gonna give away Richardson. He's been in every trade so far. Simmons and Thibel. That's kind of the package I've been working with, as well as two firsts. The Rockets want to blow it up. They get a really young team. They can rebuild and have a lot of resources to do it. Sixers get a process hero back in Robert Covington and James Harden. I think we've explained the nuances of Harden coming to Philly, so I don't think we have to do that again. All right. So, I did a little bit different this time. Spencer Dimwitty, I think he can be a very good piece on this team. And the Nets have been very vocal, and I think the Nets will trade away him because they already have Kyrie Irving. and they will Dimwitty's or won't trade him away. What? They will or won't trade him away. Well. Okay. And I think they they will trim away because of Kyrie Irving. And I don't think they really don't have that much use to him. And I feel like another team could have some use to him. So I think the Sixers could be one of them because he's a good shooter. He's tall. He can he can attack the basket. He can dribble. Not good ball handle. He's a point guard. I think we can use him. And I think the Nets could use Josh Richardson because of his defense. And he could be a good two guard for Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant because Kyrie Irving is a shit defender. And I think Richardson can guard the point guard and Kyrie Irving can guard some someone else. And I think just getting on the OKC pick, they can draft a young player. And I think that's a good trade. Dimwitty for Richardson and the OKC pick. So that is trade number one. And I feel like both teams will do that. Now the final trade for James Harden. It was it's the same trade as last time. I just like it that much. If you're adding a bean, so we're trading and B Richardson. Obviously, they the Rockets have a centerpiece and Joel and Bean, and they can add Richardson for defense purposes and just give them the OKC pick for James Harden. Harden and Simmons could be a lethal duo. I think it's a good trade for both teams. That is all my trades. Okay, what I would give you feedback on, and I'm sorry if you hear my house Woo! right now, but uh, so the first one was the Dinwiddie trade. To be honest, I don't think the Nets have a use for Josh Richardson, but that trade would get accepted. Do you know why? Josh why? Richardson, I don't think he's going to start. They have Karis LeVert. Because I think you go Kyrie Irving, Karis sure. LeVert, Kevin Durant. Is there power forward right now? I think they might need a new one. Uh yeah, I'm going to look up the Nets roster. I think uh, Tony and Prince is our uh, power forward. Oh, boy. That's not good. And, like, <laughs> yeah, they, like, they, oh, no, hold on. No, 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 no. They, they put, sorry, I need to move everybody up a position. So, do you go Kyrie Irving, uh, Joe Harris, Karis LeVert, uh, Kevin, Dur- Kevin Durant at the power forward, 
with Jared Allen Ooh. at the center. I, I think that's yeah. how you things. Anyway, there's a log jam because you're still not going to be able to start Dinwiddie in that situation, right? Yeah, exactly. And then uh, DeAndre Jordan's still coming off the bench, and not that he's going to start anyway, but yeah, I think that they don't they don't even need Richardson. He's going to be nice off the bench for them, but uh, so they they don't really need Richardson. That first round pick, there's no way they don't accept that because they they they. they they need Dinwiddie more than they need Richardson. And their yeah. value, very similar, I would say. Yeah. And then... Yeah, and that's the Harden deal. What about the Harden deal? The Harden... Oh, yeah, the Harden deal. Yeah, you did. Wait, can you, share, can you share that again? Yes, sir. I will share that again. You don't have to share your screen. Just tell me what the deal was. I'll share my screen, whatever. I, I remembered in the moment. I You know, I just... Forgot for a second. So it was Embiid, Richardson, and a first. Yes. I think if the Rockets are willing to listen to offers, then this would be a good starter. I'm yeah. not sure if they would accept it. Okay. I think you either need to throw. I, I think. Or I think. I think it's what you got to start out with because you're you're gonna try to you know you're gonna try to throw in as you know you're gonna try to not throw in as much as you need to, but uh. I think you what the Rockets are going to ask for is either an additional first or Thibel. Yeah, maybe probably an additional case, first. I think you still do it, but this is you know your introductory. Intro, intro, I don't know. Why I sound British. This is the introductory <laughs> offer that you make uh, before. Yeah, yeah. You start adding so, even more pieces. Yeah. I'm yeah gonna gonna start 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 start. Next, we're going to talk about the Eagles, and I want to fly through this a little bit more quickly because. Yeah. yeah. First section has taken longer than I thought, and I bet four fifths of that has been me trying to figure out my technical difficulties, like I'm ninety. But uh, maybe first, uh, I think this came out yesterday or two days ago. Marcus Epps from the Eagles has tested positive from COVID. Who is Marcus Marcus Epps? I don't know who the fuck he is, but I don't know. I mean, maybe I've heard his name once or twice, but before this, but. He has COVID. Good news is today, no other COVID cases within the Eagles. Again, we have the bye week. Uh, I think this should get handled. What, what do you think? I think it should get handled. I think it will get handled eventually. Like, I think Colts has a negative after uh, for the next game. So I think it's not really a big issue. I'm not even worried about Marcus Epps. I'm worried about the rest of the team getting it. Who cares if um, Marcus Epps can't make it to the next Eagles game? I think they'll be oh, fine. Oh, shit. Marcus Epps can't play. He's my favorite player. I think they'll be fine, honestly. I thought, oh, you know, prayers to Marcus Epps. I think we'll be fine. He, he's, he's, he's a young guy. You know, he, he's not going to die from COVID. He, COVID is, like, a, like, probably, like, three times worse than the flu unless you're, like, you know, 70-plus or high risk. Yeah. So, I don't think he's high risk. He probably would have opted out if he was. So, yeah, you know, if he's not doing well, then prayers to him, but he'll probably be fine. Yeah. Then next, I wanted to talk about the fuck face general manager. Fuck him, man. Philadelphia Eagles. How are you <laughs> We didn't make any moves. Just fuck him, honestly. He's a fucking GM. Just fire that piece of shit head. He's so Sorry. like lackadaisical and he doesn't do anything. And then at the trade deadline, we don't trade for a wide receiver. And I, at this point, and I think I referenced this yesterday too, we either blow it up, which I'm fine with that because I I don't think, you know, where, where the team is right now that we're going to be there. I think there's some work to do and I think there's work that can be done. If he decided to blow it up, totally understandable because at least he's doing shit, right? I I, I yeah. think he should have went for a wide receiver, got some help defensively, maybe another guy on the offensive line that can just you know hold a, hold his own. Unlike, uh, sorry, what's his name? J Jamon Brown. <laughs> <laughs> you can't argue that the Eagles' offensive line isn't the worst when your offensive lineman is sacking you. There's problems there. Oh, but, wow. Yeah. And, and we're not going to get into the whole Carson Wentz debate. I know we have a differ, differing opinions on that. So. 
But yeah. Howie Roseman, and I think personally, uh, which wide receivers do you think would have made a difference for the Eagles that that are like realistically traded? Not like oh, Michael Thomas on the Saints. I heard was really, really good. You know, uh, I think we could have, we could have traded for Allen Robinson as one piece from the Bears. I think he could have made a difference. I'm just like, I can't really think of a lot of wide receivers, but he comes to my mind first for, like, trade assets. I think Allen Robinson like, is a, a good guy. But yeah. who I was looking at specifically, you have to look at a guy, and, I, and I'll even look all on fantasy football. I'm, you know, we're not as big football guys as basketball guys, that's, or at least me. I'm not going to speak for Noah. Is that, like, true for you, you think? Or? Yeah, I think that's true. I'm not as big of as a football guy as a basketball guy. I mean, for me at least, it would be bas- or basketball and baseball at the top and then football below. I think for you, it's like basketball, football, and then baseball, like way down in the dungeon. <laughs> yeah, it's like down, down, down. But I'm going to look at some wide receivers that I guess would be tradable for here. I think I know. Keenan, this Keenan guy, Allen's right? my guy, I think. Yeah. On the 49 not, – oh, my God. The, what, what is up with me? The, he's on the Chargers. The Chargers. And he's a guy that can be a good number one wide receiver, nothing flashy, but he'll just be there. He's a good option. Adam Thielen, if he's available, you make an offer. Robbie Anderson, if he's available, you make an offer. Just kind of shouting out names. Uh, Will Fuller. Will Fuller is a guy that would be a perfect fit. You know why? Why? You can get him for cheap. Yeah, True. Texans, you give up like a fifth round pick. He's here, but you know what the problem is? I know I'm getting happy now, and I just realized trade deadline's over, and that's why we're complaining about Howie Roseman. So fuck you, but uh, you know uh, not, not you, Howie Roseman. But uh, you know what, Howie Roseman, you made so many mistakes. Fired. One, fired. I'm, we can make. I think we, I think you should get fired, and definitely when that DK Metcalf draft happened. When JJ Artega Whiteside, I don't even know who JJ Arcega Whiteside. Fuck, fuck him. But honestly, whoever he is, he was like, it was pr- pretty obvious that they should have drafted Metcalf in that draft. And look where he is right now. He was getting compared to Megatron. And also, they drafted Jalen Rager, who I I didn't even know who the Horrible hell he was before that. Rager, by the way, I don't think he's going to be that good of a quarterback. I don't think he's talented. A quarterback? You think Jalen Rager is going to be like better than Carson Wentz? And I don't want to get into this because this is going to, going to drag on for 20 minutes and we're going to go through this. I think Rager's going to be trash. I don't think he's going to be good. Jalen Rager? Yeah, well, I'm talking about Jalen Hurts. Oh, okay. Mix it oh, up Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts will be maybe. J- Jalen Rager's shit. I don't think Jalen Rager's going to be shit. I, I've seen some stuff. I think he's very fast. So that could translate to something, could end up being a bust. I think he's um, I don't think he should have been drafted there. I think Jefferson should have been drafted there, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But exactly. Uh, <laughs> J- Jalen Hurts, oh horrible evaluation of talent right there in the second round. Uh, well, not even evaluation of talent, evaluation of fit. You yeah, have a starting quarterback, they just paid a shit ton of money. Yeah, if you wanted a new quarterback, maybe get, like, I don't know, like, fucking Drew Locke or, I don't know, Justin Herbert. No, they, they were in last draft. They were two drafts ago. Oh, yeah, two. I don't know. Uh, wait, no, I hold on. Uh-huh. No, wait, no, hold on. Justin Herbert was last draft. Drew Locke was two drafts ago. And Justin Herbert. He, I, he was drafted in, like, the first round, ninth overall, but. Right. It, and, and, I just don't know why you drafted a guy in the second round when you could have drafted, you know, a really good wide receiver still, still by them. Still good talent that gets, that's available in late rounds. It's not like the NBA. Still, you know, talent to be had late, later on. Yeah. And then what do you think about the game last weekend against – no, not last, last weekend. It was Thursday, I believe. With yeah, uh, my guy, quarterback, Ben Denucci. I think Ben DiNucci is the ultimate go, but all jokes aside, he was awful. He doesn't even know how to throw a fucking football. And then Ben, and then not Ben Simmons, Carson Wentz was honestly, he sucked. Like he, 
that was probably one of the worst games he's ever played. He, like, he threw two interceptions. One of them, I don't think, should have been an interception, but it was an interception. It was a bad throw by him. And the second one, he just throws it in nowhere, and then the guy intercepts it, and it's bullshit. And this guy's, like, getting sacked. I get his offensive line sucks, but he's just staying in the pocket. He's not moving. He's just getting sacked. This is bullshit. Uh, even though we won, it was an ugly win, and I hate him even more what you, now. What do you think about the Eagles' defense? Oh, they were outstanding. I was impressed, but you have to remember, the quarterback was the GOAT, Ben DiNucci. Ben DiNucci. <laughs> I love how you say that. Ben DiNucci. <laughs> It's like a spin on the meme that they had, but it's like even better. Oh my god! Exactly. But Ben DiNucci. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ben DiNucci, if you ever listen to this podcast. But uh, probably I'll never. But uh, yeah. So I feel like the defense was outstanding. Ben DiNucci made them look good, but again, you can't discount them. Still played a good game. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think who are we, who are we playing? Uh, not this weekend. We have a bye this weekend. Oh, we're playing the Giants. Uh, our next game again. The Giants, not the fucking game. yeah, the Giants. Yeah, we played the Giants like <laughs> we, we like just played them like the week before the Cowboys. Oh, uh, you know why we're playing them again? And we're gonna beat okay. them once again. Daniel Jones running into the end zone. <laughs> Eddie Vaughn. Is that the... <laughs> Uh, so, looking at the schedule coming up, we have the Giants. I think that we're going to predict wins or loss, okay? Like, and yeah, be honest. I think that's a win. Giants is a win. Then we have the Browns. Yes. I think it's that, not unreasonable to expect it's, a win. It's, it'll be a close one, I think. I think that's a win. Seahawks. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's, a, that's like 40 to nothing. A loss. Metcalf will probably score like four touchdowns because they don't know how to guard him. The Packers definitely a now because they probably don't know how to stop like Aaron Jones or Devontae Adams. What about the Saints? Oh, that's another round. <laughs> what about like the Cardinals? That's another round. Because DeAndre Hopkins, Kyler Murray. You know what? I don't like how Kyler Murray runs. He runs like a douchebag. But he is a good player. <laughs> what does that even mean? He runs like... <laughs> oh, boy. And then we got the Cowboys and football team at the end. So those ho- hopefully, hopefully are wins. Here's what I see. Ben Benucci. Ben Benucci. So here's what I see for the Eagles. And this is, like, the most positive outlook you can have. Like, this is a po- – if everything goes right. You beat the Giants, you beat the Browns, you beat the Cowboys, you beat the football team. That's 4-0, okay? If you can get one of these games, one of those four hard games, if you can take yeah. one of those games, then you're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you can go 5-3 and three over this stretch – I know there's a lot of hard games. There's four hard games and four not so hard games. If you can win one of the hard games, five and th- you, you get five and three. You add five. Sorry, what are we? We're three, four, and one. So that's eight. That's eight and uh, here. Hold on. Uh, it's like eight and eight, seven, and one. Eight, eight, seven, and one. Gets you. I, I mean, it doesn't even matter, right? Right? Because like, yeah, exactly. We're gonna win the division anyway, I think. But all I'm saying is, you should try to win some games, get into a groove. So maybe, maybe there's a two percent chance, you know, that you beat the Seahawks in the first round. Maybe. I but, think it's a one percent chance because DK Metcalf is going to expose them like he did last year. You get the point. But I think if we can go five and three, that would be good. Uh. Probably going to be more like a four and four, but that works too. Still getting it, us into the playoffs, I think, uh, with like a 500 record, I think. But uh, yeah. And then 
I think that's all we have to talk about, unless you wanted to talk about anything else today before we wrap up. No, nothing else. You do the outros. The outros. This is like a yeah. Yeah, Broadway play. <laughs> the <laughs> outro! <laughs> okay. Oh, you can. We got off track today, and I'll say that. Uh, if you guys are watching this and it's unedited, then you will see that my, uh, that I am acting like a 90-year-old and do not know how Zoom works, and you probably saw my school assignments and shit for that. So, yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you watch the whole podcast, I give a big shout-out to you. Oh, we do have an announcement before we end. We do have an announcement before we end. Breaking news, breaking news. No, there's no breaking news. But we are getting a logo for the Sixers Standard Podcast. Should yes, be sir. My next episode, it might be on this episode. We're going to use it a ton. It's going to be, you know, the thing for the YouTube channel. We're going to have it in the videos. It's going to be all over the fucking place. Uh, yeah, so yeah. just thought we would let you guys know about that. Logo is going to be sick. So, uh, yeah. And let, you have anything else to talk about? No, nah, that's good. The logo, we got him a good guy. He's a really, his pictures are very fire. His logos are very fire. Yeah, and yeah, very we're fire. Excited for you. We're excited for you to see our logo. Yes, we are. And we haven't seen the logo either. So, like, we know. Yeah, we haven't seen it yet. But we all know. But, yeah, thank you guys for watching the Sixer Standard Podcast. I am Ethan Compliment, along with Noah Moffsowitz. We'll see you guys next hey. week.